old sponsor of the 2018 Micro Games in Yap. The all-new 2018 Kona by Hyundai, available at Cars Plus. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, located in Timuning and Dededo. Always open, always local. Ahead on primetime, Liberation Parade preps are underway. Keanu Mendiola has all you need to know to join the celebration. Plus, a heartwarming story from one local woman who recalls the moment the war came to an end for the island. And it's back to school in just a few short weeks. Carmen Tulahi with the breakdown to get your students ready for the classroom. Holiday and good evening. A photo of a sailor sitting atop a laddie stone earlier this week sparked plenty of debate about one of the island's most iconic symbols. Ahead of this viral photo, a University of Guam Chamorro Studies class spent their summer learning about these ancient stones and their place in the modern world. Carmen Terlahi has the story. Laddie stones are often painted on bus stops, needle desk tattoos, were pictured in photographs as symbols reflective of Chamorro culture. The Chamorro Studies class at the University of Guam, Fatinas Ilati, or Making of the Lati, spent their summer researching the significance of these pillars in Chamorro history. Eva Agin Cruz or Eva Chamarita and Crisal Munya both participated in Dr. Kelly Marsh's course. What this class is really about is, um, for me, is, is uncovering the wisdom of our ancestors that was kind of lost through colonization. We may use it, you know, as a symbol that we are Chamorro or that we're from the Marianas, but there's, a, there's more to the Ladi Stone. There's, there's really an abundance of history behind it. Traveling to neighboring islands of Rhoda, Saipan, and Tinian, participants marveled at the similarities in Ladi Stones across the islands cleaning up overgrown laddie sites and even using traditional tools to carve their own laddie stones. After taking the class, I found out that there were different, there were other uses of the laddie stones. So it wasn't only used for homes, it was also used as a shelter, as other places of, uh, for gathering for the ancient Chamorros. These are sacred sites that that are very, uh, that deserve a lot of reverence and respect, but they're also great sites for people who are looking to reconnect and who are looking for guidance, especially for the generation who is searching for a cultural identity. Sacred sites that must be respected, says Maneka Dioro, who's been a part of the class since it started. The icon has become a lot more commodified and commercialized, and this class is a way to experience and honor the actual artifact. She says in light of recent posts, education is key. I think it's also time for GVB and our local government to really push for some um, multimedia campaigns about uh, the ways that, about Condor and about um, protocols upon entering our, our jungles and really do what we can to educate all of our visitors and locals um, alike. The class hopes to develop curriculum with Chamorro classes around the island and the field school is looking forward to traveling to more sacred laddie sites next summer. Reporting for Guam Z's Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Trilahi. Think twice before eating that crab. The FDA is advising consumers to avoid eating fresh crab meat from Venezuela after reports of contamination of vibro myolyticus. Michelle Lastimosa, environmental public health officer, says DPH has issued a warning to local food distributors to find out if any crab meat sold on Guam comes from Venezuela. So far, no crab on Guam has been coded as unsafe. However, consumers are encouraged to take caution and ask where the crab meat is from when eating out. It's Liberation Weekend. Festivities are well underway and our Keani Mendiola has the latest on what you need to know. Everything's in full swing for this year's Liberation Day Parade on Saturday, July 21st. For those attending and those not, here's what you need to know about this weekend's festivities. The 2018 Liberation Parade will kick off at 10 a.m. Roads from Route 1 and 8 down to Adeloupe will be closed from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Staging for floats and large vehicles will begin at 3 a.m. at Adeloupe and along Assen. Villages that have opted to submit floats include Mangilao, Agate, Baragata, Aganga Heights, Telefofo, Tamuning, Pidi, and Santa Rita. This year's Grand Marshals include Juan Q. Guzman of Agate, 
and Joseph A. Calvo of Santa Rita. Over 200 permits have been issued by the Department of Parks and Rec for slots along the parade route. DPR officials remind those attending of the important do's and don'ts. Number one, vehicles are only allowed to be parked in authorized areas, no park or beach areas. Temporary structures or canopies cannot be attached to trees or park structures. No staking or digging into the ground is allowed. No burning on the ground is allowed. No cutting trees or branches is allowed. And trash, including green waste, must be removed by occupants. DPW will be on site to pick up any trash after the parade has concluded. Residents are asked to clean and pack up their respective slots by 6 p.m. The Liberation Celebration will conclude with fireworks at 9 p.m. at the Carnival Grounds. Reporting for Guam's News Network and Happy Liberation Guam, I'm Kiani Mendiola. Not all survived to tell their story, but on the 74th anniversary of Liberation Day, one survivor shares a story she's passed down for generations of a simple rag doll and a giving Marine. Carmen Terlahi has more. Natividad Calvo, nicknamed Natty, was a mere two years old when the war broke out on the island she calls home. Natty remembers July 21st, 1944. She was only four at the time as the day Guam was liberated from the Japanese occupation. She says she was walking hand in hand with her mother in Chalampago when she saw a convoy of troops. A Marine stepped out of the truck and walked her way. She recalls a handsome man, tall with blue eyes. The man knelt down and I was scared. I just tried to keep away and I turned my, my face around. And my mother said, Julia Gahu, sir. Take it, my daughter, because the man's giving you a doll. The story of the rag doll, her first love, gifted to her by a Marine named Richard Washburn, is told over and over again to her children and grandchildren. Kindness coming from a total stranger, who years later became a family friend. The story also inspired her daughter, Nicole Calvo, to write the memoir of her mother, Natty. I knew that the story was important enough to kind of honor the memory of my, honor my mother and the memory of those Archimoral who have passed on since the war. Every chapter that she had written down, I read it, I laughed, I cried, and uh, me being the character, the, the girl with the rag doll, at this age now, not four years old at the time, I went through so many trials and tribulations. I became very appreciative of a young individual. A vivid memory of peace. The mother-daughter duo so hopes all who find like time to, to read it either. are inspired yes. to connect with the so act of kindness from a total stranger um, as well. This story is significant because it focuses on a child who's four years old who her first years of life are in the throes of a terrible war on this island. Um, but she manages, you know, with the, the, the love and the grace of God, you know, to come out of it uns, unscathed almost, um, and really uh, emanating this, this sense of, you know, that the world is a great place and it's a good place and there are many, many good people on this earth. You can pick up a rag doll in the Marine and Memoir online on Amazon.com or at local bookstores. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Chilahi. It's not only the 74th Liberation Celebration for the island, but the Guam National Guard is also celebrating 37 years of commitment to the territory. It was back in 1981 that the Guam National Guard first came into creation. With only 25 soldiers and 8 airmen, these 33 members took their oath at the annual Liberation Parade. Since then, the Guard has expanded greatly with over 1,500 members currently serving today. According to spokesperson Major Josephine Bloss, Every year since its inception is another opportunity to building their legacy of dedication. Show and the commitment when we're out in country doing our job, I mean, that's what it's all about. And with every year, GNG looks to continue to grow their family, upping their recruiting efforts with enlistment bonuses and advertisements. Well, I know the Army Guard is always recruiting to uh, get more soldiers. We're trying to... Um, you know, just keep growing. Uh, the Air Guard, definitely, we're hoping that um, if everything works out right, we'll, uh, we'll grow almost double in strength. In celebration of both commemorative events, GNG members will be marching in Saturday's parade. Additionally, they will also feature their kids' 
of their Camp Freedom Summer Program. Stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. There are more ways to experience KUAM news than any other source on Guam. Download the KUAM news app for your Apple or Android device for 24-7 news, sports, videos, weather, streaming with KUAM radio, and important news alerts. And stay connected at home with Guam's first app for Apple TV. All available now from the App Store. A simple handshake. That's all Jake Calvo needed when he started his company. Today, 80 years later, we like to say thank you to all of you who have taken our hand in trust. Thank you to the dreamers. Thank you to the realists. Thank you to the family-oriented. Thank you to the entrepreneurial. Thank you to those climbing the corporate ladder. And to the ones starting a new life together. Thank you to the traditionalists and the edgy. To the young at heart and the old souls. Thank you to the daring, to the protective, to the practical. Thank you to the hopeful, to all of you from all of us, our deepest, happiest, and infinite thanks. 80 years here for you. 80 years thanks to you. Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. As a nurse, I cared for thousands of patients at their time of greatest need. I know how important it is to have our only public hospital accredited. With your help, Josh and I will change our island's approach to healthcare. We will reduce insurance costs, make sure there are enough beds at GMH, better utilize public health centers, and invest in the latest technology. We will get the job done. I'm in to help get us there, and I humbly ask for your vote. I'm and I approve this message. Character selfie specials at Chuck E. Cheese's Guam. Snap a selfie with any of our new friends, share it on social media, and tag us at CEC Guam. Show your post at the counter and get the special for only $5. Specials valid Mondays through Fridays in July at Chuck E. Cheese's Guam. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News, giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices, Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats, and via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it wherever you are on whatever device you're using. If you're a parent or student getting ready for the start of the school year, then this next story is for you. The, um, so here are some tips from the Guam Department of Education on what to expect for school year 2018 to 2019. Only 30 days away from the first day of school and many of you might have questions. KUAM met up with GDOE's Public Information Officer Isa Baza who has all the latest on DOE's redistricting plan. But parents should be aware that there have been some attendance area changes. So for our elementary schools, there are changes to uh, the attendance areas or the districting for this coming school year. Middle school redistricting doesn't start until school year 2019 to 2020, and high school will begin school year 2020 to 2021. The full list of changes are online. After registering your child in the school of their district, you can prepare for orientation. Orientation for all grade levels starts as early as next week. And though it varies by school, you can find the exact day and time at GDOE's website. BASA encourages all students and parents to attend and learn more about their school. Parents can expect to meet school staff, learn about school policies and procedures, and just learn about some of the things that they'll need to know for the upcoming school year. Classes begin Tuesday, August 14th, and DPW's bus schedule should be finalized a few weeks prior to students' first day. Reporting for Guam Z's Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Turlahi. Again, you can find more information at gdoe.net. The new law signed by Governor DiCavo allows families to authorize someone other than a school nurse to administer medicine to a student. Senator Mary Torres sponsored the Student Health Services Act. She was inspired by the story of Evie Young, whose family has been struck sharing her struggles with childhood diabetes, especially while at school. And to mostly just be able to do everything at school whenever you want to, go to any outings, go to any activities, 
and, uh, and not have to worry so much about when you're not feeling good or when you need medication uh, administered or somebody to help you when you're not feeling good. Well, thank you very much. The law allows students to self-administer their medications as needed, such as those with severe al allergies or diabetes whose timely administration of medication can be critical. Evie's mother, Amanda Young. Our story is not just our story, it's many stories. and. It, when I realized that the school had been trying to do this for a long time, I, and I realized this is where a parent can step in and yes. make it that much better for the community because that's, that's what it takes, a village, and we are many villages. Governor Eddie Baza Cavo calls it common sense legislation that allows, quote, children to deal with medical challenges on a daily basis and gives parents some peace of mind. We continue highlighting our brightest graduates this week here on Primetime. Here's head of the class with Guam High School. Hello, my name is Ari Polagonis and I am the valedictorian of Guam High School class, graduating class of 2018 and will be attending the University of Guam this fall semester. Some of the highlights of my four years in high school have been definitely the interscholastic sports that I've participated in, such as softball, varsity marksmanship with ROTC and volleyball. And then I also, uh, one of the highlights was definitely JROTC because I got to really build my leadership through that program and got to participate in a lot of community service events. One of the teacher, um, I would say teachers in my life that has definitely made an impact would be my chief from JROTC because he really was the one that from the start has taught me life lessons that have really impacted my life such as to not drop your pack and to start strong, stay strong and end strong. My plans are to attend the four-year college because I got the merit scholarship to University of Guam and see after that if I can really truly find a passion for what I want to do in life. Hello, my name is Clemcy Jane Ngara. I will be attending University of California, Davis this coming fall. I'm the salutatorian for the graduating class of Guam High School 2018. I think the highlights would be going on the bus for the cross country meets or flying off island for marksmanship competitions. I think the two main teachers that made a difference in my life are Ms. Chargaloff, she's my National Honor Society advisor, and Mr. Benjamin Leon Guerrero, he's my Student Government Association advisor. I plan on majoring in biology for pre-med track. My ultimate career goal would be an emergency medicine physician or a cardiologist. Day Guam. My name is Bernadette Capindo from the University of Guam and on behalf of the University we'd like to congratulate Aria and Jane for their outstanding achievement in placing in the top two at Guam High School. We'd also like to present you both with these awesome EOG gift bags filled with stuff that you can use in your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> so we hope you continue to strive to reach your, your goals but also have a great time in college. Best of luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations, Class of 2018, from KUAM Communications and the University of Guam. Sports is next, but first, your island weather.
Summer is here. And at Cars Plus and Mighty, that means big saving during our summer clearance event. Right now, save up to $8,000 on select 2018 Ram 1500 SLT Crew Cab. Or save $3,250 on a 2018 Chrysler Pacifica. Voted Family Car of the Year. 1.99 APR financing is available for qualified buyers. Plus, buy today and receive a Cars Plus value card where you get 21 cents off per gallon at all Shell stations. Don't miss our summer clearance event. Going on now at Cars Plus and Mighty. Cars Plus, driven by you. Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. celebrating our 135th anniversary today, both in the outlying regions on which we hub and also here in Guam itself. It means so much to our team here in Guam. It means a lot to us in the Matson management team because what it says is we're here to stay. It's a real physical manifestation of our commitment to this region. It's so important that we hire locally, we develop talent locally, we train locally. What's been a wonderful addition to our approach there is that many of the people who started off in Guam have gone off into significant leadership roles elsewhere in the company. This is our headquarters here in Guam in Micronesia. And when we talk about putting down our roots, it's not just doing business, it's about everything we do with our friends, our customers, and our employees. I believe that nobody can replicate what we do, and that's why we have such a great team and such a great service and why we're successful. This is our home, this is our life, and we're happy to make a difference in everyone else's life. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. It's Friday, so let's get to it. Your direct to own athlete of the week. We're here, direct to own Mingila for our athlete of the week. Today we have Rio Aiken and Elijah Garrido. Hi, congratulations. Uh, thank you for being Athlete of the Week. Who would you like to donate your check to? We'd like to donate it to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. You guys participated in an off-island basketball camp in Texas. Tell us how you guys were able to attend that camp. Um, we got a heads up from Coach Brent Tipton, um, the coach of the Junior Nationals team, and he just gave us the logistics and where it is and just yeah, to come out. And you guys were able to play alongside some players internationally and under the tutelage and guidance of uh, some big high school coaches and, and collegiate coaches as well. Uh, yes, we weren't the only ones from out of country there. There are plenty of people from Europe, uh, such, a, such as places like Romania, where some of them didn't even speak English. So yeah, it was good to meet those people and the coaches. We met a lot of uh, junior college coaches and uh, successful high, high school coaches and even a former WNBA player on a strict schedule, staying in the dorms over at the camp? Yeah, um, we probably like woke up at like 7 for breakfast, and then we have a workout from 7 to 12, and then lunch, and then from there we have like a, um, a hard workout from 7 to about 5, and then dinner, and then we probably have games from like 7 to like 9. What was the competition level like uh, competing uh, with those international players? 
It, it was a very high competition level. You got to you. We had to utilize what we learned earlier in the day, and uh, it was just a good way for us to remember what we learned. Attending a camp like that, what do you guys take back uh, here on the island? Um, just basketball IQ and weight, how to use your height because out there you're probably the shortest person, but when you come back here you're probably the taller person. So just like um, handling the ball, stuff like that. I take back the work ethic because you could see from the high level there that it really does take a lot to make it out, uh, in, the, out in the bigger places. For the upcoming season for IIAG, I know you guys lost a couple of key players graduating from St. Paul, but how does next year's team uh, look for you guys? It um, looks pretty good. We just have to get all the upcoming and new players just in the gym and put them to work. What are maybe some of the advice that the older players have passed along to you guys, the alumni and, and people that uh, played with you guys before? Uh, you just got to uh, work out on your own. Like You can't just show up to practice three to four times a week. You got to put in put on the work during the off season and even when there's no practice. All right. Congratulations. Stay tuned to our next Dow Run Zone Athlete of the Week. AUAM Sports Athlete of the Week is brought to you by. Well, that's it for sports. We're back right after this. Every day a plus. My name is Koji Kichicho, and I'm a student at the University of Guam. UOG isn't what I thought it would be when I was growing up. When I was in high school, all I kept hearing was, you need to go off island. You can't do the things that you want to do here on Guam. There are no good opportunities here. I challenge those opinions. I am part of a generation that defies the idea that nothing big comes from a small island. My generation dreams and achieves. Many of the business leaders, public servants, teachers, nurses, artists, and thinkers that are now revitalizing our island came from UOG. Now, I'm looking forward to completing my homegrown education and going out into the professional world saying, I'm from the University of Guam. Tarot every Tuesday for community health information, advisories, and news you and your family can use for leading a healthier lifestyle. Health Check during KUAM News Healthy Living. Health Check with Nurse Jen is presented by Island Cancer Center. And before we close out the news tonight, here's our latest round of birthday shout outs from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. Happy birthday, Kailani Reyes. Also celebrating today, happy birthday, Summer Lee. Three, love Nana and Tata Paris. And last but not least, happy 20th birthday to Geriana Tenorio. Remember, you can be a part of the Coldstone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online on KUAM.com. Please make sure to include with your photo your name and birth date. And the big extended prize, who is going to get this week's Coldstone Creamery ice cream cake? Well, our winner for this week, for this Liberation Weekend, is Isaiah Ray Duenas. Congratulations, a rep from Coldstone. We'll call you on how you can redeem your yummy Coldstone Creamery ice cream cake. That's going to do it for us here, but stay tuned. Extras next. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E. KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. Matson, gold sponsor of the 2018 Micro Games in Yap. The all-new 2018 Kona by Hyundai, available at Cars Plus. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, located in Timuning and Dededo. Always open, always local. On primetime, Liberation Parade preps are underway. Keani Mendiola has all you need to know to join the celebration. Plus, a heartwarming story from one local woman who recalls the moment the war came to an end for the island. 
And it's back to school in just a few short weeks. Carmen Terlahi with the breakdown to get your students ready for the classroom. Holiday and good evening. A photo of a sailor sitting atop a laddie stone earlier this week sparked plenty of debate about one of the island's most iconic symbols. Ahead of this viral photo, a University of Guam Chamorro Studies class spent their summer learning about these ancient stones and their place in the modern world. Carmen Terlahi has the story. Laddie stones are often painted on bus stops, needle desk tattoos, were pictured in photographs as symbols reflective of Chamorro culture. The Chamorro Studies class at the University of Guam, Fatinas Ilati, or making of the Ladi, spent their summer researching the significance of these pillars in Chamorro history. Eva Agin Cruz or Eva Chamarita and Crisal Munya both participated in Dr. Kelly Marsh's course. What this class is really about is, um, for me, is, is uncovering the wisdom of our ancestors that was kind of lost through colonization. We may use it, you know, as a symbol that we are Chamorro or that we're from the Marianas, but there's, a, there's more to the Ladi Stone. There's, there's really an abundance of history behind it. Traveling to neighboring islands of Rhoda, Saipan, and Tinian, participants marveled at the similarities in Ladi Stones across the islands cleaning up overgrown laddie sites and even using traditional tools to carve their own laddie stones. After taking the class, I found out that there were different, there were other uses of the laddie stone. So it wasn't only used for homes, it was also used as a shelter, as other places of, uh, for gathering for the ancient Chamorros. These are sacred sites that that are very, uh, that deserve a lot of reverence and respect, but they're also great sites for people who are looking to reconnect and who are looking for guidance, especially for the generation who is searching for a cultural identity. Sacred sites that must be respected, says Maneka Dioro, who's been a part of the class since it started. The icon has become a lot more commodified and commercialized, and this class is a way to experience and honor the actual artifact. She says in light of recent posts, education is key. I think it's also time for GDB and our local government to really push for some um, multimedia campaigns about uh, the ways that, about Condor and about um, protocols upon entering our, our jungles and really do what we can to educate all of our visitors and locals um, alike. The class hopes to develop curriculum with Chamorro classes around the island and the field school is looking forward to traveling to more sacred laddie sites next summer. Reporting for Guamzi's Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Terlahi. Think twice before eating that crab. The FDA is advising consumers to avoid eating fresh crab meat from Venezuela after reports of contamination of vibro -faram myolyticus. Michelle Lastimosa, environmental public health officer, says DPH has issued a warning to local food distributors to find out if any crab meat sold on Guam comes from Venezuela. So far, no crab on Guam has been coded as unsafe. However, consumers are encouraged to take caution and ask where the crab meat is from when eating out. It's Liberation Weekend. Festivities are well underway and our Keani Mendiola has the latest on what you need to know. Everything's in full swing for this year's Liberation Day Parade on Saturday, July 21st. For those attending and those not, here's what you need to know about this weekend's festivities. The 2018 Liberation Parade will kick off at 10 a.m. Roads from Route 1 and 8 down to Adeloup will be closed from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Staging for floats and large vehicles will begin at 3 a.m. at Adeloup and along Assen. Villages that have opted to submit floats include Mangilao, Agate, Barragata, Aganga Heights, Telefofo, Tamuning, Pidi, and Santa Rita. This year's Grand Marshals include Juan Q. Guzman of Agate and Joseph A. Calvo of Santa Rita. Over 200 permits have been issued by the Department of Parks and Rec for slots along the parade route. DPR officials remind those attending of the important do's and don'ts. Number one, vehicles are only allowed to be parked in authorized areas, no park or beach areas. Temporary structures or canopies cannot be attached to trees or park structures. No staking or digging into the ground is allowed. No burning on the ground is allowed. No cutting trees or branches is allowed. 
and trash, including green waste, must be removed by occupants. DPW will be on site to pick up any trash after the parade has concluded. Residents are asked to clean and pack up their respective slots by 6 p.m. The Liberation Celebration will conclude with fireworks at 9 p.m. at the Carnival Grounds. Reporting for Guam's News Network and Happy Liberation Guam, I'm Kiani Mendiola. Not all survived to tell their story, but on the 74th anniversary of Liberation Day, 